Hi everyone, Paula here from CropNotesAndCrafts.blogspot.com Today I wanted to give a little 411 a little tutorial on uh, die cut machines and the cuddle bug. There's been a lot of questions on um, one of the message boards that I spend some time on. So this is for some of those newbies out there. And I have the original cuddle bug. I've had it for a number of years. I think I've had about three years. Uh, and the new cuddle bug is pretty much the same. There's just a couple different features on it. If you uh, have a surface that you can suction the cuddle bug down to, that would be great. Mine really doesn't suction down to this paper. Um, so, but you know, it doesn't bother me any. But if you open the cuddle bug both sides at the same time, it will suction down as long as it's clean, the surfaces are clean on the bottom. Okay, one of the questions that um, people have been asking <clears throat> has been about um, one, about the their cutting plates uh, warping or cracking making cracking sounds and that's perfectly normal. This is what your plate B plate looks like when it's new. I have a spare set. I'm still using my original plates and I use my cuddle bug um, with I think I use it on every project I make now. Nearly every project that I make now. These are my B plates that I use every day. Okay. And they they will warp if you're plates go through your cuddle bug you know, tightly in the beginning, um, the plates will start to bow and warp. And this plate's a little bit warped. It bows down. It's high in the middle here. And the way to help prevent that is since, um, you know, my bow goes this direction, I'm going to use it in my cuddle bug this way and not this way because when it comes through the rollers it will bow up this way so I'm going to use my plates this way and the way to prevent that is especially when it's new and if it's tight they may warp and each time you use it turn your plates a different direction so if the first time you use it and you run it through and then your plate starts to bow up this way when it comes through then flip the plate over and run it through um, with the plates flipped over and that will help prevent that so you want to if you have bowed plates you want to make sure that you put them in the machine this way so that the high point is in the middle and it's facing down okay and your plates should look like this they're gonna wind up having um, cut marks on them and that's normal and it's normal to for the machine to make sounds uh, actually cutting when it goes through the machine so that's no big deal especially with the thin dies like the nestabilities it's you know you really hear that okay one of the gals was having a problem with uh, having a tough time getting her sandwich through the machine. And I think she was using um, a regular Sizzix die. So you want to remove your A plate and you want to use your two B plates. I'm going to put my die in. And I've got my paper here on top. And then your other die. And the other thing that you want to watch is if it's tight when it goes through, particularly when it's new. Uh, some people are placing their die. Some people are placing their die close to the leading edge. 
uh, and that's not good. That's going to be tough to, to get that through your machine. So you want to set your die back off the leading edge, make your sandwich, So I want my, my two plates to be pretty much equal, but I want my die to be set back off that leading edge. So it will go through the machine much easier. That's normal, that cracking sound is perfectly normal. Okay, now it's gonna be a little bit tougher if uh, to cut chipboard. So let's go over that one. Well, let me find a heavier piece of chipboard. I'm going to pull out a die. piece of chipboard cut with this as a tag. So let's change dies. And I'm going to pull out one of the Biggs dies and I'm going to want my B plate, my Biggs die, my chipboard, and for this to fit across here it needs to go this direction and it's not going to go through the machine that way. So I need to cut my corners off. So it'll fit through the machine. And there's a lot of question on these Biggs dies and the XL dies, whether or not they fit in the cuddle bug, and the answer is yes, they do. So this could actually go through this direction or this direction. So if I cut my other corners off, I can get that die. It just it just fits. And I can get that through there. Now if you buy the Sizzix plates, you'll have to cut your plates down because they're going to be a little bit too wide. Um, so I stick with the Cuddlebug plates most of the time so I don't have to, to alter my, my plates to make them fit. Okay, and you notice I made my sandwich and my die is set back off that leading edge. It takes a little more effort, so I just hold it at the top and press down on, on it, but it still ro rolls through pretty easily. Now when my machine was new, uh, it was a lot tougher and I just had to, to go slowly because I was afraid of, of breaking it and you could break it if you, if you force it. But it goes through, cuts a piece of chipboard pretty easily. Okay, somebody else was having problems with their um, paper cracking or tearing using the embossing folders. And if you have a die that has a lot of detail, that can happen depending on the paper that you're using. And see that just that just tore right there. There's so much fine detail that's embossed so close together there. And the reason that it did that, one is that the paper it has to do with the thickness of the paper and how long and large the fibers are in the paper. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, if I had set this back off this edge a little bit, that would have helped also because that's really close to the edge. So one way to prevent that um, is um, there's two things you can do. With your heavier weight papers, this is 80-pound uh, paper, which I like to use uh, a great deal, but it is more expensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to check this paper. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just sitting it there. And it's pretty well flat across this edge, but when I flip it the opposite way, this paper wants to bow. It wants to bow down this way so the bow is up and the sides are going down. So that paper, and that's just natural of paper, it has to do with how it's processed. So that's going to help me figure out how I want this to go through my die. 
So I want my raised embossed area to be on this upside, this top side, um, because that's going to help it to, to prevent it from cracking so easily. The other thing is how quickly you, you roll it through the machine makes a difference. Uh, so sometimes you have to work a little more slowly if you have intricate designs. And then one other thing that makes a difference is um, if you mist your paper, that will help. And um, you really need a fine mist mister. This was a a uh, little perfume bottle. I had a larger one and broke it, but this was a perfume bottle. It has a very fine mist. Um, less expensive bottles with these trigger sprays. Uh, it's kind of tough to get a real fine mist. So, um, if you can find something like this, it would be better. And what you want to do is lightly mist your paper. And I'm just going to okay. Now I can see you can see already how pliable my paper is, and I can see that it's a little bit heavy right there. So I'm just going to rub that off and spread that water out. Detail die and use that. So, um, if I'm going to be embossing, you want to use. There's some extra pads that you'll you'll need to to look at. There's a crease pad, and this is to use on dies that actually cut and make fold lines and this will help prevent the die from cutting through the fold line so and this is something you you really do need it makes a big difference but since we're not cutting and creasing we want to use the texture impression plate and this plate is a little more flexible it's not nearly as flexible as the crease pad the crease pad is very flexible and I've used mine so that it's got a, a bow in it and it really doesn't matter which way I feed it in the machine. It's kind of stretched out. But this textures impression pad is it's just uh, a little more flexible I think than the than the acrylic pads. I need my B plate, my die, my paper. My paper's dry already. So hit that with a little bit of water. You can also use rubbing alcohol. Then I'm going to put down my rubber mat. And I have not seen a difference in the rubber mats. They're all the, pretty much the same thickness. Now I have, there are some plumber's gaskets out there that are thicker, and I don't like them. So um, this is um, an impressibilities pad. I've had the Sizzix pad, and I I cut through it one day. So I had to replace my pads, and they're they're the same thickness. You just need a, a silicone pad. Okay, now I'm going to feed this through. And when you have really detailed images, you know. You're not on a mission to get it done in five seconds or less. You want to feed it through slowly. It's sticking. There's some sticky on my die, so it was just sticking there. But you can see how that came out, and it did not. It didn't tear up there. 
I hope that helps you out. I'll maybe make a few more videos um, using the die cutting machine since there seems to be some new people out there right now with the machine with a bunch of questions. So I uh, hope this was helpful and uh, thanks for joining me today.